welcome everyone this evening, and I know we have a lot of guests this evening for our baby dedication, and we are so glad to have you in service with us this evening, and uh, I may say this again later, but I'll just say it now, we, we do not practice infant baptism, we believe that, that baptism should be a conscious choice of the individual, and you can't get more innocent than a newborn. Um, so, uh, but we do dedicate our children to the Lord. We, we, uh, we, he gave them to us, and, and we give them back to Him. So that's what we will be doing here in a little bit this evening. So again, if you've come specifically for that this evening, we are, we are glad to have you. Uh, but I, I will say, I can't speak for anybody else. I'll just speak for myself. This, this is not intended to be a ritual or a ceremony. Uh, we do this out of faith and trust in God. And, and I believe if there's ever been a day and time in which we ought to ded- dedicate our kids to the Lord, it's the day we're living in. Praise God. Those of you that are joining us online this evening, wherever you're joining us from, we welcome you as a, as a part of this service tonight. And uh, I, I realize there, there's something else first and foremost to you, but I'm going to say it in the context of what they are to me um, due to their schedules and all that they have going on. It's always a treat to have my dad and mom in service with, a, with us. I know you call them Bishop and Mother Wright. But we honor them as Bishop and Mother Wright. But um, it's a treat, and uh, this is this is uh, definitely a special evening, as uh, I get to dedicate my first grandson, which will also be my dad's first great grandson, which will be my grandmother's great great grandson. So, praise God. And uh, I would apologize for my voice, but I can't do anything about it, so there's no point in apologizing. So, uh, we'll, we'll get through this. Joshua chapter 1. Begin reading with verse number 1. Now, after the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon you, shall tread upon That have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness, from this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight as the lead in to this baby dedication. The God of. The God of. Lord, I thank you for your presence that we have entered into this evening. Lord, I thank you for the things that we have declared and singing in our worship. Your faithfulness, your goodness, your promises. Lord, those are not just intended to be entertaining songs or inspirational songs, but they are a declaration of truth. They are a declaration of what your word says and what we believe, that you are a God who is faithful and true. You are faithful and true to your word. Your promises are yea and amen. You remain the same, God. Your power, your ability, 
remains the same. Your word declares that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God, I pray that you would speak to us this evening. Let your word minister in this place tonight. We trust you for your anointing, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. As the children of Israel are getting ready to enter in to the land of promise that God had promised generations before, God did not make Joshua go into the promised land simply on the promises that had been given in the past. He reaffirms to Joshua personally. I don't want you just to take your word for what Moses said, Joshua. But I am confirming to you that as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. While this is, the, while this is relatively the beginning of the Bible, there is a pattern that is established Leading up to this point with Joshua, you go to the book of Genesis and God calls Abraham. God calls Abraham and promises him what he was going to do in and through the life of Abraham. How that he was going to bless him, he was going to multiply him. He he promised Abraham that if anyone cursed Abraham, he would curse them. And if anyone blessed Abraham, he would bless them. I probably shouldn't get on a hot button topic on such a special occasion this evening, but I'm going to stand in this pulpit tonight and challenge you. You as as Christians, don't you don't need to get caught up in some political thing that's going on in our world. The Word of God says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And if you want to reduce what's going on to, some, to simply some kind of political issue, you need to read your Bible. I believe what we're seeing going on in the natural in Israel and in that region of the world is a natural manifestation of a spiritual battle. God promises Abraham what he would do. And then in Genesis chapter 26, he comes along to Abraham's son Isaac. And in 26 and verse 24, the Bible says, The Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I. I, the God of your father Abraham, I am with you. And I will bless you and I will multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. I may not have appeared to you, Isaac, in the same way that I appeared to Abraham. You may not have had the same vision that I gave Abraham, but I am confirming to you, Isaac, That the same way that I was with Abraham, your father, I am now with you. But it doesn't stop there because in Genesis 28, verse number 10, the Bible says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and he tarried there all night. Because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Behold the Lord stood above it and he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father. And the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee, will I give it and to thy seed. Jacob, I'm not just expecting you to live off the promise that I made to your grandfather. I'm not expecting you to have faith in me just because of what I promised your father. 
But I've come to you, Jacob, to reaffirm that the same way, no less of a way, I haven't changed one bit. But the same way that I was with your grandfather Abraham is the same way that I was with your father Isaac. And now, Jacob, I want you to know that it's the same way that I'm going to be with you. And then it continues on in Exodus chapter 2. In verse 23, and the Bible says it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. God confirmed also to Joseph the same way I was with your great grandfather Abraham is the same way that I was with your grandfather Isaac. And it's the same way I was with your father Joseph, Jacob. And I want you Joseph to know it's the exact same way that I'm going to be with you. What's interesting is, I think if you were to start with each one of these, and if you were able to have interviewed them in their lifetime, what Abraham faced was a greater challenge than what others had faced. God comes along and says, Abraham... I want you to do something. I want you to leave your surroundings. I I want you to leave home. I want you to leave family. And I want you just to trust me and follow me. That's, That's a big step, God. Brother Staten also mentioned... Friday is a part of the other comments I referenced and and many others including my parents here this evening have done the same thing but referenced and I think it was 1981 I believe it 80 81 early 80s he and his wife and four small children in California or Arizona at the time pastoring but God called them to Lexington Park and they packed up four kids and drove across country to come someplace to start a church 50 plus years ago, my parents drove into this town, just the two of them, just a couple of hundred dollars in their pocket to start this church. It was a, it was a big step for Abraham to, to do what he did, but God came through. And then Jacob comes along, and excuse me, Isaac comes along, and, and, and there's really, at least from my reading and study of the Word of God, Isaac, there's not a whole lot uh, of of, of History about Isaac like there is about Abraham and Jacob. But Isaac faces a new set of challenge. You see, the thing is, every generation feels like, and I believe more than likely it really is the case, that every generation faces new challenges and greater challenges. That's the pattern. That's God's pattern. But God's pattern also is that every new generation is supposed to draw off of the strength and the testimonies of the previous generations. So Jacob, when you start facing your adversity and you're worried about a brother who's hunting you down and going to kill you. I want you to think about what I did for your father Isaac. And I want you to think about what I did for your grandfather Abraham because the same God I was with and for them is the same God I'm going to be with you, Jacob. (laughs) And Joseph, Joseph doesn't leave home by choice. He gets thrust away by his brother's betrayal and sent to a foreign country. He becomes a slave. He's thrown into prison. He eventually gets a promotion. But in the midst of all of that, Joseph, I need you to remember that the same way that I was with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want you to know, Joseph, I'm the same God that's with you. And if I could bless them the way I bless them, if I could bring them through the adversities I brought them through, I could can do the same thing for you, Joseph. Those examples are, in fact, uh, uh, blood relatives. Father, son, grandson. 
Here's what's interesting and here's what should give you and I some hope. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 1, as God begins to call Moses, the Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock back to the and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And I realized that Moses was a Hebrew and he was a descendant, but he wasn't, he wasn't as closely related and connected as, as, as Isaac and Jacob and Joseph were. And yet God says to Moses, the same way that I was with them, I am the God. I, 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 I want you to notice the, the tense of the verbs here. He did not say, I was the God of thy father. I was the God of Abraham. I was the God of Isaac. He said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. And I, who, who's the I here? It's the same God that called Abraham out and started to lead him toward the promised land. It's the same God that blessed Isaac. It's the same God that began to bless and multiply Jacob. It's the same God that allowed Joseph to be led into prison and captivity and slavery, but then elevated him to become the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and the Parasites. I, 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 I want you to know, Moses, I'm telling you that I am the same God that was with them, and I'm now with you, and I'm going to be with you, and as the same God that was with them, I've got the same power for you now. We can jump to the New Testament in Acts chapter 3, verse number 11, as the lame man has been healed, and as the lame man which was healed, Peter, which was healed held Peter and John all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified the, His Son, Jesus, whom you have delivered up and denied Him in the presence of Pilate when He was determined to let go. The same God, the same God that appeared to them in the Old Testament is the same God that that Peter is saying is our God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And I realize that most of us here tonight do not have a natural lineage to the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. But when we were born again, when we were baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, we became just as much as a part of that lineage. And so you and I can declare here tonight that the God 
God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and the God of Joseph and the God of Moses and the God of Joshua is the same God that is here with us now. Same God. Same God. He's a God for every generation. He's a God that's real to every generation. I got to be honest with you. As much as I long for the day of becoming a grandfather, there was also a side of me from a natural side that says, why? Why bring another life? At least as a believer, why bring another life into this chaos? This is a, this is a crazy world. This is a, this is a messed up world. You, 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 you got to be 18 years old to vote. You got to be 20 years old, to buy, 21 to buy alcohol. How old do you have to be to buy cigarettes? 21. But in middle school, they'll let you pick your own gender. In elementary school, they'll, take, they'll get you to start questioning whether you're a male or female. I don't think it's going to get any better. So there's something inside of me as a God-fearing man, a God-fearing father, and potentially a God-fearing grandfather that says, as much as I'd love for my kids to have kids, I don't think there's a whole lot of time left in this world. Maybe we ought to just not bring any more into this chaos and confusion. But I'm going to tell you tonight, the thing that gives me peace and the reason I can be excited is because I believe the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, who was able to stand up to the challenges of every generation is the same God for every infant, for every child, every teenager that's in this place tonight. You may face some bigger challenges than the generation before, but I've come to tell you tonight, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is the same God that is going to be with you. Matthew 22 and verse 29, there's a, there's a question that's been brought to Jesus. Lord, the law says, you know, if, if, a, if a woman dies, if her husband dies and she has no child, her brother's supposed to, and, 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 and there, was, there, was, there was seven brothers and the first one died and no child, the next one died and no child, and I don't know how you get to the seventh if I'm if I'm six or seventh brothers in those line, I am I'm running away. There's something odd with this picture here. How have you gone through the death of five now and I'm next? <laughs> Ain't happening. Nope. <laughs> Something's wrong. Jesus answered and said unto them, Matthew twenty two, twenty nine, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Have you, have you heard that? Have you not heard that said? He's asking them. That's the question, but here's the statement. God is not the God of the dead. I know I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're not alive anymore. But, but God is not the God of the dead, but He is the God of the living. I've come to declare to you tonight, I'm thankful for the God of past generations and everything God did for them and those that are dead and gone on to their eternal reward. But I'm glad to know tonight that I'm not here to celebrate the God of the dead, but I'm here tonight celebrating the God 
of another generation. He remains the God of the living. I know it's a crazy, chaotic, messed up world. But we've got the same God. The same God that was able to part the Red Sea as the children of Israel were stuck with the Red Sea in front and Pharaoh's army behind. That same God is our God tonight. Same God. And the promise is, as I was with them, so I am, so I will be with you. Was thinking about it standing on the platform earlier. We can begin to see it. I say begin. Perhaps it's been a little while, but Bishop, we can we can look around, and I know other parts of Antioch can do this as well. But but I can look around this sanctuary tonight. I can I can look, and I can look at the God of Richard and Jane Bishop. I can, I can look at the God of Richard and Jane Bishop and everything that God's done for Richard and Jane Bishop. But then I can look at the God of Mark and Jesse and add into that equation the God of Wendell and Michelle. Because now there's the God of Andrew and Allie and there's the God of Emily and there's other... Bishop lineage here that I'm missing, so forgive me, don't get mad at me. Emily, can you can you testify tonight that the God of Richard and Jane and the God of Sandy is the same God as yours? Yeah. 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 Look back to the I can think back years ago to the God of John and Bonnie Clandon. The God that was was that that fire downtown Annapolis? Where was that boat fire? Where St. Margaret's? The God of John and Bonnie and Kim rescued them from a boat fire. Rescued Brother John from a horrible car accident one night after camp in Pennsylvania is now now the God of Kim and Alan McGuckian. But now, now it's the God of Lauren and Lily. Same God. Same God. I, I, can, I can look at the God of Glenn and Linda. And I, I look at the, I'm, I'm reluctant to do this because I know I'm about to get somebody's name wrong here. So just forgive me in advance. I'm 52. <laughs> but I look at the, the God of Hans and Ann Ingram. And now I, I look at the God of Isaac and Lacey and Nathan and Christina and Eric and Kristen and and then, too many kids to name. <laughs> but this is one of them. Yeah. Julian, do you understand? The same God that brought that guy up there out of the world, out of darkness into the light. It's not a lesser God. It's not a different God. But whatever he did for your grandfather, he's now going to be the same God for you. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Forgive me. I, I try not. I, 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 I try not to. If, if you think I do, I apologize. I try not to show favoritism to my family, and they're no better than the rest of you. But but it, it is a little bit of a special night, so you'll just have to humor me for a moment. Seventy-something years ago, as I believe a 14-year-old little girl sat on the porch with a very poor mother 
Somebody just happened. I don't think it was even really intentional on their part. But they just happened to pass along a flyer. And a 14-year-old girl went to a revival service. And the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob became the God of Lula Singletary. Not Singletary at that time. And then years later, the God of Lula Singletary became the God of Alice Singletary. Now, right? Same God. Same God that began to provide for my 14 year old grandmother who came from a broken family, lived a life of poverty. Blessed her is the same God that brought my parents into this town 50 plus years ago with $300 in their pocket. And now here we are, 50. I know God, I know it's God, but God uses people. And, and now, and now it's my God and my wife's God. And, and then. And then another generation that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's God became Lula Singletary's God and Mac Wright and Merle Wright's God and Chester Wright's God and David Wright's and Angie Wright's and now Elizabeth and, and, and Esther. And, I, mean, I, mean, I can't even remember my own kids, so now don't be offended. Elizabeth, Esther, Timothy, Nathaniel. And now Jalen and Jacob and Mila. Wow. And I'm watching. I'm watching. You know what's interesting? I think my dad, my mom can relate to this. What's interesting? It's a lot easier for me to believe for the God of my parents to be my God than it is to believe for my God to be their God. Because I'm looking at what they're facing. and we, we were in a conversation a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't just them. I forget where we were. Or some others were involved in it. I thought it was tough trying to be new home buyers 30 years ago. You got to be a millionaire to buy a home now. But you know what? I, I've been blessed to live in several wonderful houses, living in a beautiful house that God has blessed us with. It was built in 1952, but we love it. I'm not going to tell you where it is publicly, but I'm going to tell you something. If you haven't seen them, I didn't plan them so I can brag about them. If I planted them, I wouldn't brag about them. But I'm telling you, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow, you need to come drive by my house and look at the azaleas in my yard. They are absolutely, unbelievably amazing. Somebody borrowed some of them for a recent post on Antioch Central. But I have to remind myself, the same God that made a way for us when we went from living in an apartment in my parents' house them charging us no rent to buying a trailer two lots away from my grandmother to then buying a townhouse to now living where we are that, that it was the same God that blessed Chester and Alice right with $300 to get them where they are that's going to be the same God and now it's carried on to another generation and in just a couple of weeks from now it's going to be carried on again and the God that started with Lula Singletary and Merle Wright in northwest Florida is now becoming the God of Jacob and James, y'all messing me up. I tried to breeze over, but I messed up. Same God. Same God. Same God. So I don't know what's going to happen in James' lifetime. And I don't know what's going to happen in baby Mark's lifetime. And if there's more to come, I don't know what's going to happen in their lifetime. But I know one thing I'm going to stand on and believe in is the same God that was able to bring Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Joshua through. And the same God that's brought my grandparents and my parents through is going to be the same God that has as crazy as this world may get, it's going to be able to bring them through. It's going to bring your precious babies through. I know I probably use this almost every baby dedication, but I'll use it again tonight. 
You know the story. It's one of the well-known Bible stories. Moses gets put into the river in a little ark because he's supposed to be killed because he's a male child. Pharaoh's daughter finds him, takes him, adopts him. And he spends the first 40 years of his life living in Pharaoh's house. Educated by the Egyptians. Trained by the Egyptians. Mindsets being seemingly influenced by the Egyptians. It's only a couple of years or so in the first couple of years of his life when he doesn't even have the ability to really understand and comprehend much. It's only just a couple of years that his Hebrew mother has him. Gets paid to nurse her own child. Wouldn't that be great, moms? I, I can't, I, I readily admit to you, I can't show you this in the Bible, so hear me please. I can't take you to the chapter and the verse where it says this, but I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe that in those first couple of years that as Moses' mother was taking care of him, even though he had the, didn't have the ability to understand it, I believe that as she was holding that baby boy, she was telling him, Moses, I know you're about to be raised in Pharaoh's house. I know you're about to be exposed to everything that Egypt has to offer. I know you're about to have access to every temptation. But I want you to know this, Moses, the God of the Egyptians is not your God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is your God. I realize you may spend the most formative years of your life living in Egypt but I just want you to know Moses you don't belong in Egypt you're not an Egyptian Moses you belong to the children and the people of God and the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that when Moses reaches 40 years old and it's now time to make a decision will I continue living as an Egyptian and have access to everything Egypt has to offer or will I give all of that up to be become a slave the Bible says Moses decided that he would rather suffer reproach with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season let me tell you something if that could happen in Moses' life without the infilling of the Holy Ghost what can happen in the lives of our children our teenagers we don't need to fear what this world is doing and what this world has to offer. But we can trust that the same God that was able to preserve Moses is the same God that's able to preserve our children. And I just want to end with this challenge because this, this dedication tonight is not simply about dedicating our children. And that our job is done. Can I challenge every parent tonight? You're not just living for yourself. This is not just about you and your walk with God and it's, you know, just your little world. Listen to what 1 Kings chapter 15 says, verse 1, and I'm going to read it just from the Message Bible for the sake of time. But it says this. In the 18th year of the rule of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, Abijah took over the throne of Judah. He ruled in Jerusalem three years. His mother was make a daughter of Absalom he continued to sin just like his father before him he was not trust he was not true hearted to God as his grandfather David had been but despite that out of respect for David his God graciously gave him a lamp a son to follow him and keep Jerusalem secure secure for David had lived an exemplary life before God all his days, not going off on his own in willful defiance of God's clear directions, except for that time with Uriah the Hittite. In spite of the fact that Abijah continued in a sinful life in the ways of his father, the Bible says that God had respect to David challenge every parent in this place tonight 
It's not just about you. It's not just about your own little walk with God, take it or leave it. But there are future generations. And again, I don't think there's much time left on this earth. So maybe the, maybe the generation that's currently being born is going to be it. But nevertheless, your walk with God, your commitment, your dedication to God can provide blessings to future generations. So I've come to declare, I realize there's children, infants that are about to be dedicated that have no idea what I preach, no ability to comprehend it. But I declare to their hearts, to their spirits tonight, whatever's coming in this world, whatever they will have to face, they've got a God who is up to the challenge. They've got a God that has proven Himself generation after generation after generation. And He will be their God as much as He was the God of the generations before. I, I, we don't always do it this way, but I feel to do it this way tonight. The first thing I want to do is I, I want to ask all of the families that you're here tonight to have a child dedicated I want to ask you to come to the front. If you are a fr friend, a family member, or a friend of one of these children that are being dedicated this evening, we welcome you to come and stand with the family. We would love for you to do that. So if you will make your way, if I could get the uh, licensed ministers, if you will come. If you're not directly connected to one of these babies being dedicated if you would come stand down front and prepare to help pray for these children as they're coming as they're coming this is the part that we don't necessarily normally do I want to ask I want to ask the rest of you you're not connected to one of these families I want to ask you if you would Want you to would you gather your family together? In fact, I, I want to ask you to just make it crowded down here so you don't have to come all the way down. But I, I want you to gather your family together. And, and in a moment when we begin to pray for these children that we're dedicating, I, I want to ask, I want to ask you families that are not specifically dedicating a children. If it's a dad or mom, I realize we got some single family homes here. So whoever the whoever the head of that household is, I want I want to ask you to pray a blessing over your family tonight. I want to ask you that as we are dedicating this ch these children, I I want to ask you that you would pray for your children that that your God would become their God. At the same way in which God has confirmed to you that He's your God, that, that He would confirm to them. Would you, would you stand and begin to do that? If you want to just stay kind of where you're sitting, sitting, that's fine. But, but I want you to gather them together. I, I want to, again, whoever the head of the household is, I, I want you to lay a hand on the rest of your family, your, your children, your spouse. Pray that the same God that's been your God would become their God. In the name of Jesus, would you begin to pray? In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we dedicate these children to you tonight. Lord, you blessed us with the gift. You blessed these parents with the gift of these children. So tonight, God, we give them back. We dedicate them to you. They belong to you. You're the one that gave them. We are merely the stewards. I pray, God, that your hand would rest upon these lives. I pray, God, that your angels would guard them, would keep them, would preserve them, Lord. That you would keep a watch over them, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. That you would order their steps. We plead your blood upon them tonight, God. In, the, in a world of so much chaos and confusion with an enemy that has a target on these lives, we pray for grace and mercy. We pray for salvation, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your blessings upon every parent tonight, God. I pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance, give them knowledge and understanding. I pray that you would give them peace, Lord, that in the midst of all of the storms of this world, peace to know that you're the same God. You're going to be the same God. You're going to be the same God. You remain the same. You remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the God of Abraham. You're the God of Isaac. You're the God of Jacob. You're the same God in this place tonight. You have not changed. You will not change. You remain the same. You remain the same. In the name of Jesus. in the midst of every storm. Peace in the midst of the turmoil. Peace, 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 peace. Thank you for your peace, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and 
their children.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to I want to say one more time to all of our guests, those of you that have specifically come this evening for this baby dedication. Thank you for taking time to come and be a part of this special evening for these families. We honor you for doing that. Praise God. And um, remind you, those of you that have children dedicated, if you would like, we do have a photographer ready to get a couple of uh, photos. And um, each family can take turns coming up and get a couple of different shots with your family, with you, as well as my wife and I, if you would like that. So God bless you. And uh, it's actually a a lot earlier than normal, so I encourage you to take a little bit of time and greet one another, fellowship a little bit, Jesus' name.